Hi guys, congratulations. Hi. Hi. So, Olivia, I wanted to start with you here because I know you have a significant amount of TV experience, in particular Home and Away, but even having worked on so many episodes over there, what was it about being on a big film set like this that kind of still surprised you about the process? Well, I think it was just two completely different scenarios as well. Like um, in Australia, as you said, it's a lot, it's a lot of a smaller community. Um, so, and you know, you do all, like, I had never, when I got told I had a stunt double, I was like, what? Or when I got told that we had stand-ins and catering and that I could take a five minute break, it was like a holiday. Uh, like, I remember when someone, like, they said, okay, well, you can walk on off set and have a stand-in. I was like, no. I would get in so much trouble if I did that in Australia. Um, so there were two completely different experiences for me. Um, I think what I took away from Home and Away with the crazy hours, I was used to working 15 hour, 15 hour days, like, you know, 60 to 70 hour weeks and having to learn pages and pages of lines. So I came in with that mentality. Um, and especially because I was in Toronto, so I was in a new country, jet lag, and I was on a different contract so I could work longer hours. Um, so I was equipped, but there were, you know, hugely different experiences and very different genres. Like Home and Away is a, a, a reality drama, whereas, you know, this is a CGI film and the makeup and costumes, would, it was incredible, but two very different experiences that I'm lucky yes. that I've had. I can imagine. Folly, I can't not ask you about this, being such a big Mick Garris fan. What was it like working on Nightmare Cinema? And what did you take from your experience working with him over there to a movie like this? That was the last question I was expecting to hear today. Wow. Um, Nightmare Cinema was a blessing. That was one of the first lead roles I'd ever, I think it was the first actually, um, especially in a film with a horror legend like Mick Garris, you know, working on Nightmare Cinema. It was amazing because it really, um, it introduced me to a world of special effects, you know, but more more horror themed special effects, obviously, you know, there's a there's a lot of, you know, fake blood and stuff going on, which was really cool. But I think it helped me prepare for this role in the sense of like, I get to pretend to be in another reality like I did in Nightmare Cinema. So it's just uh, another sense of just being in different realities. So yeah, it definitely prepared me for this for sure. I love Nightmare Cinema, every second of that. So one of my favorite parts of this movie is the incredible ensemble. It's so easy to fall in love with all you guys. So a couple rapid fire questions. Tell me who answers the question and then maybe why. Who of the ensemble is most like their character? Isabella, like Thomas, for sure. She's like, like spitting. It's just like, a, it's just like, it's just like Isabella in high-end fashion, essentially, I'd yeah, say. Yeah, spitting image. Yeah. If you guys could swap roles with anyone in the film, who would you pick and why? I love Mike as a character who we haven't really been introduced to yet, but I want teleportation as a power. So I, I just want to play everyone. There you go. I just want to, I'm selfish. I just want to do everything. Yeah, I'd probably, <laughs> I switch with, I'd probably switch with Tuma. I liked his, um, I liked his extremely confident and boastful personality as a character. And I feel like that would be a fun character to portray, to portray someday. So, yeah. Wait, now I'm assuming you guys have been asked a million times what power you would want. So I'm going to steal a question I used from a different junket. If you could have like the most boring but practical superpower out there, what would you choose and why? That's a really good question. And practical. I think organize, I'm so, I'm such a massive procrastinator and like I'm so bad at organizing things that I think just like, being organized and actually completing tasks in, a, in an appropriate time setting, which is just something people should have, which I just don't. So that'd be cool. That's not easy cool. sometimes, I get it. Yeah. Polly, how about for you? I have to say like a clean freak, probably. Everywhere I go, everything just cleans around me, like on its own. Because oh, I'm a pretty, I make good. some messes sometimes. So I feel like if I walk around, everything just, you know, like in Cinderella, like a little the cartoon, halo. and like the 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 all of the accessories would start walking and they'd start sweeping and they do everything on their own. Like every oh, time I like walk Olaf by, it's like Olaf with his little like snowflake halo. It's like you're in your own little clean bubble. Yeah, yeah, it would just happen. It'd be like and I'm very into clean. very into that idea, but I have a feeling that like mine would have to be if I could snap my fingers yeah. and create good Wi-Fi everywhere I go. I'd be a real happy person. Why didn't I think of that? <laughs> I've had time to think that. about it. No, 
oh, all right, I want to make mine like I have a soundtrack for everywhere I am. I want to just pretend I'm in movies. So I'd be like, this is an appropriate song. And I just hear it like I'm in my own little soundtrack. Oh, everywhere you go, it's just like blasting. Just yeah, I'm just, and everyone's like, what's that noise? And I'm there like, yeah, this is appropriate. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Thank you guys so much for your time today. And again, huge congrats on the movie. It is Thank a blast. So Thank you.